That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Jason David Frank. Boom shakalaka. Please do not change channel. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometry. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. If you'll take one second, this guy right here. Hit subscribe. You're coming back over and over again anyway. You might as well hit subscribe and know when to come back. We've got artists, authors, filmmakers, musicians, actors, creative minds of all kinds. We're here this weekend at the Melbourne Independent Filmmaker Festival all weekend long, and we're hanging right now with... Justin Sims, a producer and an actor, and Chris Alonzo, the co-writer and director. Of The Edge of Madness. That's right. That's right. Of The Edge of Madness. Thank you for having see, us. You Thank you, see, sir. he's got like a whole... Thing. I've got a shirt here for you. The There's Edge the poster. The Edge of Madness. It's actually Dean Thomas's face right there, so that's an intimidating... He's a nine-time UFC fighter in our movie. So, he's, so you uh, want to go to this movie. Or we'll send him. You have to go to this to movie. He'll here. get really mad at That's me. That's right. He has your address. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, guys, hey, thanks for coming over and hanging Thank with you. us, man. I appreciate Thank it. you so much for having us. Thank yeah. you. Um, all right, let's talk about Edge of Madness. All what? right. So we're going to start with Chris. Yes, sir. As co-writer. Co-writer. Uh, me and Justin, uh, a couple years ago, came up with the concept. And Justin really uh, came back on and, and put it all together. Uh, it's about addiction. It's about uh, the opiate abuse uh, in the state of Florida, uh, specifically, and it's about mental health and suicide. So it's a hard hitter uh, of a passionate subject that we wanted to do just because of the passion. You know, I always tell everybody when we when we air the show that next year they have to come to the Myth. But this this year at the Myth, if, if you, you come to be educated, mm. because they're hitting some hard topics this year mm -hmm. and the opioid opioid abuse is a huge topic right now it's a huge problem it's uh, a well, huge, i mean it's the it's, it's the an biggest, epidemic it's, yeah. the, it's the worst drug epidemic in written history that you know uh in 2016 more more americans died of drug overdose than americans died in the vietnam war I and mean, that's just a, a a fact uh where we are uh west palm beach there's 17 overdoses a day a day um and my best friend was one of them in 2016 and wow. died and that's what really i had to do something with uh with his death and uh because it was doing something to me and so that's why we made this film uh there's probably uh 20 pictures of people that have passed away in our film um all people that i i know directly or indirectly wow. um so we have angels in our film you know uh so it was an important message for us to tell i i went to a like a a, a film festival that was an based on that that subject matter um and i didn't see a lot of a lot of stuff that i was you know really good material but uh they didn't know a lot about filmmaking so uh i thought maybe we could mix those two things and make a uh a drug awareness scare movie uh that doesn't really stink too bad that's always a plus if you can make a movie that doesn't stink too bad that's our main objective just don't mess this up don't yeah. make it stink yeah yeah you know in the arts we strive for competence. <laughs> Excellence is somebody else's problem. We want to we want to be competent. Yes, sir. When we're creating art. Um, all right. So this I mean this is obviously a very personal topic for you mm -hmm. guys. Okay. So um, it, you know, for a lot of people, you know, if you're if you're shooting a comedy, you spend all day long on set laughing. If you're shooting a science fiction film, you spend all day long trying to figure out what the hell you're going to put in that green screen. Okay. You guys are shooting something that's so incredibly personal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that you know people who have suffered from not just the addiction but have died from it. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's that like walking on set and, and trying to create your art? I'll take and again, competence. We're shooting for not stinking so that you have to let your brain do the work, but your heart's in there, man. Well, I'm, I'm blessed. Uh, we're blessed to be able to work together and to be able to have a, a team that we've worked with for the past couple of years, which when we bring that energy on set there's no uh, there's no highs and lows there's go and the energy we all know what our job and our task is so 
I don't think there was a negative, uh, uh, sad feeling on the set. There was a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy for that negative. Uh, uh, for to the tell negative that story. To tell that story. Yeah. So uh, as far as we're concerned on our set, it was a very happy set and a very, uh, very serious set. That, that really the energy was really contained and, 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 and made sure we, we got the job done and, and told that tale. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's anything you, else? You, you play the lead. Correct. You play the lead in this. Um, and again, uh, you know people mm -hmm. who have suffered from this problem. Mm -hmm. You know people My, who myself have died as well. from this problem. And yourself mm -hmm. as well. So you have to go on set, and, I, and I, without having seen the film right now, I, I'm going to assume that you had to face this problem as a character. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we try to channel our experiences into the acting. Mm. At the same time, there's a part of that that's got to be just incredibly terrifying to be bringing that to life, you know, as, as an actor. What, 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 were, what was your process like? What, what did you go through with that? Um, well, if there's, if there's no butterflies, then I think something's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's about aligning the butterflies into fighting formation. Uh, you know, I pretty much, I, I think that us artists are the That's most... That's going to be the next YouTube meme, by the way. Somebody's going to have butterflies in like a... Yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, you did that. You I got mean. a couple things going on. Yeah. But I think, you know, <laughs> I think us artists are the, are the most alive people in the world. And that's because we have the ability to go back into our past. And, uh, you know, we all walk around with these invisible bags that have all of our experiences in them. But as artists, we can put those bags down and pull things out and, and recreate them and use them. So for me, I, uh, as an actor, from an actor point of view, I... Um, you know, I lost my dad and, and my best friend uh, within a few months of each other. And so I, I mourned their death. And it was therapeutic for me. So, As, you know, so many artists tell me that when they're telling an important story, that the art, creating the art is a, is a catharsis. Mm -hmm. It it's is. It's an outlet. It's a place to put your grief and your anger. It's a place to put your passion in we, whatever form that manifests. We made sure before we, we went to shoot this film that the scenes were where it's, it's, he's really pulling from the depth of his soul. We're reminded of in the passing of his dad. They're, they're, our original film that we, we did uh, for 20 bucks uh, eight years ago, uh, of The Edge of Madness, which was our original So they had twice concept. my budget. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, Just be competent. It, 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 was, it was a lot of the story that Justin had put together. And on this one, after uh, Dennis Sims, his father, had passed this, this last year of, of cancer, I, I told him, I, we have to put the element of your father into this story. Because he was an award-winning stage director. Uh, yeah. And so what better way to, you know, uh, give him a, a late great shout-out than to, uh, to therapeutically uh, mourn him and create art with it? So you know? you're, you're seeing... Yeah, you're I, I, got, I, got, I got nothing. <laughs> when you shut the host down, you're doing good. Um, okay, you, now, um, you won Best Director for Edge of Madness. Yeah, Twice. Yeah, we did. Twice. 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 <laughs> This guy, show off. He's, now he's just hamming it up. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, again, it's a passion project. There's a lot of emotion in this. You're working with friends. You know, so many times you see the the, you know, the great big talk shows and the actors and they, they all get together. Like, it was like family. Mm. For you guys, that's that's more than true. You didn't create a family on set. You guys came there as yeah. friends. Well, I can tell you, this guy right here has been in my wedding. Uh, he stood in the back of my father's funeral while I was doing the eulogy like this. Uh, my father was, you know, him as a director. My father so was his mentor. So you've been a mourner the whole time. So, <laughs> mourner the whole time. Exactly. He was in the back of the wedding like this. It's over. Just kidding. My wife, J.L. Howery, is our production manager and screenplay writer. We love her. J.L., they had nothing but good things to say about you. Off camera. <laughs> That's my fault. Uh, not, don't take it. It's not him. Um, okay, so, guys, um, you started your first film project together with 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. All right, so here you are, and you're putting together an ex exceptionally powerful film, an award-winning film. I love that, by the way, I won my first author award, and now I, I make the girls refer to me everywhere they go is, and now enters award-winning author and journalist. That's you are, until you are. You're an award-winning author forever. and journalist. Forever. And that's yes. I, so that's how I make them introduce me now, so, you know. You should make I, them. Well, next time, next year, award-winning award -winning director. director. That's Alonzo, right, yeah. Chris Alonzo. <laughs> and, um, all right, so... Chris, <laughs> what were some of the challenges that you guys faced putting this particular story together? Were location challenges? Were there funding challenges? What, what were some of the... Honestly, there was so much uh, good energy and passion put together that everything flowed. Um, we kind of got started on it, and we had a couple things that fell through. 
which gladly it did because it really evolved into something even bigger than what I love it when a challenge turns yeah. into an opportunity. It mm. was. It, it, it 100% was. It was uh, amazing how it happened, and I was really disappointed, and then it just it, it happened for a reason, so well, it, it all came through. Both of you having a passion for the issue that you're, that you're telling your story about, okay? Um, you know, writing is rewriting. It's, it's, it's researching. Directing is, is double that. Did you guys, did either one of you, find out anything during the making of this film project that you didn't already know? Did you did you learn a little something yourself? I did. Well, yeah. At the time of us shooting this, I I uh, was the IOP housing manager for a treatment center. So, in in layman's terms, that means that I ran four halfway houses with about forty adults, ages eighteen to sixty. Um, you know, we I was in the trenches of this disease, um, you know, driving around with Narcan in my car to, to zap kids that were overdosing. So, you know, when you're, when you're living in the field, you know, if you're, if you're in the middle of a war during the day and then you have to go shoot a war scene at night. It, it certainly does inform your... Yeah. What yeah. a great gift for an actor. Yeah, well, and you know, the other thing is I think is, is working, again, so closely in that field. Um, like anything else, I think it would tend to jade a person a little bit. The opportunity for you to tell this very personal story takes that edge off. You now, it it, it's not just that you got to witness it every day, you got to work with it every day, but now you had to go and play it, and play it from the heart, and play it from the emotion, and go back to work the next day. It's the first so time. I think maybe it. the, you know, just looking at you going, I think maybe your, your job informed your acting, but do you think maybe your acting informed your job a little Absolutely. Bit? You know, wow. I showed before this before this film, uh, we, this is our seventh film festival, and other than the, the seventh film festivals we've been to thus far, we've shown it a couple, uh, you know, uh, memorial events and stuff like that, and we and at uh, the opening of a treatment detox facility, small little, you know, private venues like that, but I showed the rough cut of the film before it was released to about 70 uh, of my former clients that were in rehab at the time. And I'd say 65 of the 70 went, I did that. Wow. And that let me know, okay, this is real. Because um, mm -hmm. there's a scene, the first scene of the film, I'm, I'm, I'm really emotional and I'm saying, hey, man, my mom, just, my mom just got killed in a car accident, man. I have no money right now, but if you can just bring me something, man, I really, I love you, man. I, I, I'll see you soon. <laughs> hey, mom, what's up? Listen, uh, I need 60 bucks. You know, there's a switch that happens. Um, and, and a lot of the clients, you know, that are fighting this disease, uh, you know, they do things when they're, when they're um, actively using drugs that they would never do. There's a lot of acting involved in their lives. But they, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and they, do think, they, they do things under the influence that they would never do their worst day not high. Well, and you, you can know. take that as, as far as women selling themselves or, or, uh, or, or people manipulating and lying to get what they want. Um, so that was accurate. So that, that, let, that was a good gauge for me to know that we were on the right track. That's fantastic. And how about you? What, what, were, what were your takeaways as you, as you got further and further into this project? Um, got uh, just, just a lot of specific information about, uh, about addiction, about, uh, the, about the numbers uh, of people. Uh, for example, I'll say it here, 25 minutes, every 25 minutes a baby's born addicted to opiates in the United States. I didn't know that. I've, uh, you know, my my. Did I? Thanks for that. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. My fiance has been. Have uh, a great day. Been Award yeah. winning, Chris Alonzo. <laughs> yes, sir. Taking us to school today. Yes. Uh, my my fiance has been eight years sober. So I mean, I've I've been around it uh, for, through family and friends, but those specific numbers, uh, you got to research it because obviously, they're not telling us. And we have a and close a ally reason. with a with a really successful uh, doing the right thing treatment center, Daylight Detox and Recovery, based in West Palm, that, that really are about helping Love people. It. So having that ally, you know, that's like that's like riding Moby Dick and having uh, and having the ocean to talk to. So it's like guy's a metaphor is just rolling out today. He's doing good. Um, guys, uh, what are the plans for Edge of Madness? Beyond the f festival circuit, are beyond we planning on a commercial release? Is there? What, what do you guys got going on? We're, we're figuring that out right now. We're gonna. We want to get it out to the world, and we'll get it out to a platform in which you know everyone can see it. So uh, if it's if it's forming a YouTube channel, or I mean, we, we're still in the works of. It's getting through the festivals, the, and then we want to give it to the world. The internet uh, and internet culture, I'll say, because the internet's been around for 40 years, but internet culture mainstream has been around for 15. 
um, and it's changed the arts and entertainment paradigm. It, it has made stories like yours that might scare the hell out of out of you know six suits around the table. Mm -hmm. um, you can go right by those guys. Yeah. You can take it to a mass audience in a way that you never could. You know, we never could back in the day. So I wish you very best Thank of luck. You very you got much. an important story to tell, guys. Thank you, sir. We have been here hanging Thank with you. Justin Sims, actor, producer, Chris Alonzo, award-winning director <laughs> and co-writer of The Edge of Madness. We have to say goodbye as we do that. We're going to thank our partners and our friends at Something Unique Magazine, Space Coast Comics, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, our great friends right across the street at Melbourne Square Mall at Pound the Grape, our good friends at Embellish Effects. Guys, if you're working on a film and you end up in Central Florida, Embellish Effects, they've got your makeup, they've got your hair, they've got Everything. you name it. You can make him look like a hippie from the 68. 68. Like, like, right, I mean, just got all that specific. Gone. I that want specific. 68. You got the 68 hippie. You, you got the 68. Like the, That's oh, what I want. You okay. know what the most famous word in 68 was? What's that? Here. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and yesterday. Keep it with the drug theme. Yesterday was Friday, so everybody knows that joke. Uh, anyway, guys, oh, God. we're going to say keep Thank logging you. on, keep tuning in. Thank you. And see who we're hanging with next. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, you so much, awesome. you, sir. I appreciate it. Really appreciate it.